Joe, I think folks are really going to love our next segment. Everybody likes to talk about the headlines and the hot topics of the day. That's right up our alley. It is, and I also know that there are times when news reporters wish they had just a little bit more time to cover a story. So this is your chance to learn a little bit more about the stories beyond just the sound bites. So let's talk hot topics. As the population in Southern Oregon continues to grow and the culture changes, Jackson County is experiencing growing pains in the criminal justice system. It's time to start a discussion about how to plan for the future. Let's learn more. I think there's a lot of factors to, that contribute to this. And uh, one is population. And our jail was built in 19, I think 81 started. I believe, um, you know, it started at like 192 beds and then it moved forward. But regardless of that, is it's a it's a dated system and it's and it's antiquated and it's never been quite big enough. We, they were sued for overcrowding back in the 80s as well. Building a jail is expensive, really expensive. The last jail that was built by a county, because there was a city of uh, Springfield built a jail after this, but by a county, was in 2004 in Multnomah County. It was called Wapto. Wapato, and uh, it was a 525 bed jail and it cost 58 million dollars to build. In 2004 when I came to the county we sent a team to the National Institute of Corrections to look at what the county needed for jail space and to begin the discussion about building a new jail and we were told we needed a belt to build a jail would be 600 or 650 beds just to meet the standard for the sentencing of the people we had in jail now. Um, my guess is that's probably closer to 700 or 750 now. As a criminal justice system grows, as the city of Medford and the city of Central Point and Ashland add police officers, guess what? More people get arrested. There's more crimes fed into the system and the district attorney's office has to go file more cases. And so as that system grows and the jail just stays stagnant, we get more and more overcrowding. I think the system overall is taxed because the lack of jail space um, doesn't offer us an opportunity to have intervention with some people where you might in a bigger facility. You know, if somebody were to to be held um, and not forced out of jail by overcrowding, they may have a chance to see somebody who specializes in, you know, alcohol and drug treatment or mental health treatment or some of these other avenues. They may have those opportunities to get seen and to get kind of some intervention, which may reduce recidivism at least before they go to trial. Right now what we're seeing is is you know people are in, they're out, then they're in, then they're out, then they're in, then they're out, and then they're in, then they're out. And they, so they, they go on these kind of crime sprees at times. Um, we know there's no accountability for offenders when they do do stuff, you know, and they know that. That's why we have a real high um, ratio of failed to appears. So I think the whole system as a whole is just is weakened because of the jail space and I think that itself leads to additional crime just because you know if there's no consequence what are you gonna do so in the state of Oregon people don't get sentenced to jail if they get sentenced to 30 days they don't get sentenced to 30 days jail most people don't know this they get sentenced to 30 days in the custody of the local supervisory authority in our county the local supervisory authority is actually the community justice director so those people get sentenced to that person's custody. They may start serving their sentence in jail because that's where they were when they got convicted, but they can be moved to any alternative custody to serve their sentence. And the idea is to pick the least costly form of custody that will gain compliance. Not every person needs to be in jail. Some people are fine being out on work crews. You've seen them as you drive by, people wearing orange jumpsuits, cleaning you know, Medford's intersections, thanks Medford, and Medford school districts, uh, lawns and mowing them and those types of things. Um, they can serve their uh, sentence on house arrest. They can serve their sentence in inpatient drug treatment or our transition center or any myriad of places that the supervisory authority feels it's possible. What we've done in our, in our county is build capacity in all those other systems and we've tried to maximize the use of those systems because they're much less expensive. You can put someone on house arrest for $15 a day. You can put them in jail for $100 a day. Where, where do you want to spend the money? And so we've built huge capacity outside of the jail system and we do deal with a lot of people outside of the jail system. You know, when you talk about alternatives to custody, you know, generally that alternative is a, is a good thing in many cases. Uh, but the, the other end of that is if you don't comply, then you have to go to jail. Right. And when there's no jail, 
you know, there's really no stick to make sure that you adhere to the alternate custodies or treatment programs or whatever. So I think that's probably a significant reason why things are kind of spiraling uh, or going downhill. So we focused all of our efforts to make sure when we're talking about a new gel, we can tell people, look, we spent money in the least expensive way, every way we could, and we still have this issue. And we do have an issue. I mean, you, you read it every day. Someone gets arrested and they're out the door before the police officer that brought them is out the sally port. And it's very frustrating to police officers to have to do that. I'll tell you, the last time I looked at this, and it's been several years, and this will shock you, we had 11,000 outstanding warrants for people in our county. The reason why I'm telling you that is it's virtually impossible to build a jail that's big enough to hold everybody that should be in jail, unless you don't want to spend money on anything else. Point being is we could build a 750 bed jail or a 1,000 bed jail, but I want everyone to know that, and, and no, no falseness in this, we're still going to have overcrowding and we're still going to have releases. You can't lock all 11,000 people up. I will tell you, just opening back up the 62 beds, let the system breathe a little bit. And uh, it will be helpful if we ever get to the point of being able to build a new jail. This is not a project we'll take on this year or the year after or the year after. This is a multi-year project that takes a lot of education and a lot of understanding. I've learned a lot about you know how much the jail is kind of the foundation for the criminal justice system. Um, but you know, I think things are improving. The 60 beds, you know, initially filled, mm -hmm. um, you know. I think as time goes on, that will provide some relief. I don't think it's the end solution for our county. I think eventually we have to look for a bigger facility. My guess is a new jail probably built at 1,000 beds and operating at 750 beds would be somewhere between 80 and $100 million to build. Uh, and that isn't what scares me. Um, what scares me is the operating costs of it. I mean, we'll see 10 million more a year in operating costs uh, You know, if we triple or quadruple the size. And, you know, over the life of a bond, 20 years, $10 million a year in operating costs is way more than it costs to build the jail. So there's a lot to talk about with that.